I know everybody has their own way of doing things and I don't always follow the rules. I try to work out my own techniques and try to figure things out myself. Um, I was told that right-handed people will coil their baskets going the opposite direction that I, I'm going counterclockwise because I'm feeding my needles this way. Um, I have done it both ways. I've, I've done it clockwise and I prefer it counterclockwise. And I'll tell you two reasons why I prefer it this direction. One is the tie stitch. The tie stitch, these stitches are straight on the top, but on the back, they have this diagonal, they have these diagonal lines. And when I was going the opposite way, I had to be careful to make sure that I put my needle in the right place and I was forever having to correct it. I don't seem to have that problem at all when I am doing that diagonal stitch, when I'm going counterclockwise. Also, um, one of the reasons I was told, whoops, this thread got loose. One of the reasons I was told that going um, this way is so you, you don't get your thread tangled up in this. I don't have a problem with that because I actually, let me put something here for contrast, because I actually have um, a technique that works and, it, and I never worry about it. I'm right-handed. This is the, the hand that does all the work. I hold it with my left hand and see when I bring my needle, when I bring my thread around, I bring it under the basket. And so I'm doing all my work on this side. So if I were feeding my needles from this side, my needles would be in the way. Um, this way, the needles that are sticking out are not in my way. So let me just do a little bit of this just so you can see my technique. You see, my thread doesn't come anywhere near the loose needles. Um, sometimes I do it that way, where I just slip my thread under the basket, and I usually kind of hold things with my left hand. The right hand does all the movement. Of course, it'd be different if you're left-handed. Okay, and, and another way that I do it, sometimes I do it like this. I will put my thread on and then I just kind of rotate the basket around so I could see my thread and I just turn the basket around and again even if I do it that way I don't have to worry about catching my threads in in these loose ends so anyways that's just it's all about technique and everybody kind of learns their own way of doing things and you have to just experiment and try and figure out what works best for you. I mean, we all have our different ways of doing things. So that's one way, and here's the other way. But this, this works fine. I'm very happy with it, and I think this is gonna be my preferred um, method. Well, I might as well show you how to put a bead on, since that's what I'm about to do. I think I'll zoom in a little bit, hold on. Okay, it's time to put on a bead. So we slip it on our needle and I have just come, my thread is coming from the back side of the coil and I always like to wrap it going that way around the back and pulling it up to the middle. Okay, so since my thread is coming from the back side, I want this to go in on the front side. So my thread came out the back, um, on the back on the bottom. So now I want to bring it up. I'm going to go up through the needle since I'm coming from the back. Oops, sorry, I got to get in. There. My thread is coming from the back. So I go up through the bead and I want my needle to come to the front. Just think 
think a figure eight. Since I came from the back, I want to come up to the front. And so we've gone down through the bead and then we've come up through the bead. Now I'm going to wrap it around and I like to, since I'm doing a wrap and I do the wrapped row at the same time that I do the bead row, I want to just make sort of a knot, not really, but it, it's kind of like a knot. So I just like to loop it around the top, the top of the bead. It just helps to secure um, the wrapped row so they don't slide this way or that way. So I do that at the top of each bead. And that's that's how you put on a bead. So then I'll just go back into my, my wrapping. And I usually, um, the way that I'm doing this is I will, I'll wrap out about an inch from where the bead is. And then the bead, depending on the size of your bead, is going to take up some of that space. So it winds up being about a three quarter inch between each one. So I hope you found that helpful. So that's all for today.